All right, folks, I am here with Walking Dude, and I am here with Fantasy Grounds College, and we are going to talk about modules using Classic and using Unity, and some of the things you might come across when you're doing conversions or if you have an older module. I came to an issue that I had, and I brought it to Sean's attention because he was the original author of the module, and it, it had been a couple years. So when I tried to use the module in Unity, it wouldn't open. I couldn't find it. There was just no way to access it. This Again, this is Sean, or we know him as S Sides or Walking Dude. Welcome. Hey, how's it going, Larry? Great. Yeah, you showed me the module. You sent me a copy of that from back when I made it originally, and... Sure enough, I tried to open that thing in Fantasy Grounds Unity, and it does not even show up in the module activation window. Yeah, that's uh, something that we might see with older modules, especially if they were created you know, more than a couple of years ago. What did you do to, to fix it? Because I wasn't sure how to do it. I've seen your video that you put out before. I didn't even remember where it was, but uh, it, you, know, you actually put me in the right direction. So what's the uh, first thing we want to look at here? Well, the way that I figured out how to fix these things, and it's kind of weird. I've got the module here. You can see it in my file. It's in my modules folder for Fantasy Grounds Unity. What I do is I'll take that and make a copy of it over here. I'm just going to make a new folder that I can work in, and I'll copy that module in there, and then I will unzip it. So I use 7-zip, and I can just extract everything out of that module. I want to do yes to all. And you can see there's a bunch of uh, image files in that module. And for some reason, one of the things that happens is that Fantasy Grounds Unity needs to see the image files in a different way. I create a new folder called Images. It's lowercase. Yeah, just like the one that's normally in your campaign folder. It's going to have an Images folder in there. And then I take all of the pictures except for the thumbnail. It doesn't have to have that. And I make a copy of them, and I paste those into that new folder. Basically, you have two copies of all the images. So it's going to make your module file bigger. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that part. Then I don't need that original module file anymore. I'm going to make a new one. And we probably want to call it 1.4 since it's revised. Yeah, that's a good idea. For revision control. Because if you don't keep your files organized, you're, you're going to lose track of what's what. So I make a 1.4. Dot mod. Another thing is about file names. Is it not a good practice to use a bunch of characters um, that are not common for the titles and for the headers and for the file name itself? That's a really good point. And for image files in Fantasy Grounds, I've had a lot of trouble anytime you use some kind of special character like an ampersand or something along those lines. So I stick to strictly letters, numbers, and dashes, typically, is the only kind of characters that I'll use in a file name. Now, in the module name, you can use other kinds of characters like a colon or something. But for the module file name or for all the image file name, that can cause problems. Now that I've made my new module, I'm going to copy it back over into the modules folder, and I'm going to get rid of that old one. Yeah, very important to get rid of that old one. Really, because unintuitively, for some reason, Fantasy Grounds, if it finds that two modules have the same name, it will automatically, by default, use the older one, the one with the earliest file date. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a weird thing. So let's test it now. I'll go ahead and launch Fantasy Grounds Unity now. And once I get it launched, I'll go ahead and share that with you. It'll have to sit here and wait for you to load it. <laughs> right. That's pretty cool. You like I've run into problems with weird file names, even campaign names. If I put in a strange character, it'll load in Fantasy Grounds. But when you go to parse it and do other things with it, it may not, depending on what uh, you're doing. Weirdest problem I ever ran across, I would create a module, and I would, of course, use author so that it would have a reference manual. And once the module was exported, none of the image files would show up in the module, and all of the mo image files would be deleted out of the campaign folder. That's odd. That is really odd. <laughs> Stupid odd. That's like... Oh, well, there is a fix in it, because the, re the reason it happened is, you know, the thumbnail file that you saw in there, that shows the, it's the little image that shows in the module activation window and stuff? Yeah. I used to put that in the main campaign folder instead of in the images folder. And oh. that's what was causing that to happen. Something to do with that and the author extension was causing that problem. Good to know. So now That's... I've got it open. Let's see what we got here. Hopefully we've got a module. Look there at that. It, it shows up this time. 
So go ahead and load it. Let's see. Take a look yeah, at let's it. Let's take a look at that thing. It even has a reference manual. What do you know? Well, of course. So well, let's have All a right. look in here. Yeah. So this is the module we use for teaching in Fantasy Grounds College. So it looks right. Now, there are some anomalies that occur yeah, sometimes. Yeah, look at there. What do you got there? See the little boxes? Yeah. Look at those. Those are characters that will display correctly in Fantasy Grounds Classic, but will not display correctly in Fantasy Grounds Unity. Now, well, do They're, you have a reason or cause for that? Because I see that occasionally, especially on DM skill modules. Yes. You know, when you make a document in Word and you cr and you type in double quotes and single quotes, and it makes the fancy ones that go one direction for the opening quote and the other direction for the closing quote? Yeah. Those don't work good in Fantasy Grounds Unity. And usually, in a PDF, those are the ones you're going to have. Somebody wrote their adventure in a Word document and then used uh, you know some tool to, to convert it into a PDF. So it's got those fancy opening and closing quote symbols, or it's got the fancy N dashes and M dashes, the ones that are a little longer than a regular dash. Yeah, what about the ligatures? Ligatures are where letters will display incorrectly. Like you'll have this, uh, the letters IF that are next to each other. Mm -hmm. And so instead of disp displaying as an IF, they'll display as a little box or they'll display as a completely different letter entirely. Yeah, I've seen that. And so that's a little bit of a different issue. You, it's, it's much harder to find and replace for that. But for these quotes, you can totally find and replace to get those fixed. And let me show you how to do that. So means now I'm going to share my... So do you suggest that potentially if you're going to be converting a module or creating content, maybe dumping it into a text editor so that you can avoid those issues down the road? 100%. I do that every single time. I always copy all the text out and make a text file and go through and do all those kind of corrections before I ever start putting anything into Fantasy Grounds. So yes. Now I'm going to share my Notepad++ with you. I can see it. This is a file I made. It's got all those funky characters. So you can see the single quotes, the double quotes. I've got the HTML object names for them, but sometimes they'll show up in a module that, uh, and they look like that. That's and the markup, right? I, yeah. And this is what I want them to look like, just a regular plain single quote or double quote. Those are symbols that I keep in this file so that I can easily copy and paste them because I can actually use those in a Fancy Grounds module. So if I want to use a bullet and I don't want to use the bulleted list text formatting that Fantasy Grounds provides, I can use one like that. I also keep the U hat symbol like in the in the name Faerun so that I can easily copy and paste it in there. Or if I need to use the Spanish N symbol, things that just make it easier for me to do stuff. Okay. These characters, the N dash, the M dash, and these quotations, those are probably going to be the most likely culprits. So if I now load our db.xml file from the module. And into, this is when it's expanded, right? Or when you have it extracted, it's in that in that directory. And in this case, it's actually called client.xml. So the first thing I'll do is run my macro, which I have a macro that replaces single and double quotations with the correct ones that I want to use. Now I just have to make sure that I don't have any other lingering problem characters that are still uh, hanging around in this document. Okay, so I do. So see, in this case, they're sh showing up as like the HTML markup rather than as an, an actual symbol. I'll have to more manually do this process. Well, the easiest thing I can do is just highlight that and then do a find replace to replace it with a regular single quote. And 180 of those were wow. scattered throughout the file. Exactly. What a pain. How would I want to do that 180 times? No, no, thank you. <laughs> so it looks like it's important that you learn how to use that tool, whatever text editor you have, and understand the find and replace function and what it does and why it does it. Agreed. And this is Notepad++. I know a lot of us in the community that do this stuff, this is what we use. There are a few other ones that are good as well. but So right now you're just kind of going through and look for problematic characters. Yeah, that's right. See here I've got another symbol that I need to replace. Okay. So we had the single quote on this side. That was the closing single quote. Here we've got the opening single quote. Nice. We're going to do the same operation. Place all. Only 114 of those. Only. See if we've got any other lingering issues. I don't see any more. may not have had. Let's see if that part displays correctly. I'm referring back to uh, Fantasy Grounds right now. So when you make these changes, you have to recompile the zip file, of course, right? Yes. Luckily. All I have to do is delete the previous module, select all the files, and 
zip it up again and change the name. I'm seeing a character with the um, identity 150. I don't want to see what that is. Let's see. Ah, uh, see, I need to get rid of those. That 150 is going to cause a problem. That's one of those long dash. Like a, like the M dash things? Mm-hmm. So that means I'm going to select all of those. I'm going to replace them with a regular dash symbol. And 32 of those are gone. Once that's done, I think that's probably going to get that for us. At that point, I will save the file. And we will go back to our file manager. And we will delete that. Copy. So you just edited what we did before. You're going to rename the zip file. Yep. Now so that's not module. too bad if, if you know, if you're just starting off or, you know, if you want to fix your module, you just need a good editor, like in this case, Notepad++. It's free. It, it seems free. like majority of the people that use it, 90% of the people that are doing this type of work use that. It's a lot of us. Yeah. There, I know there's a couple of people that use something else, but right. it's a lot of us. But now once we have that, let's test it out. I'm going to go back to Fantasy Ground. And the, the cool thing is we don't have to close Fantasy Grounds and reopen it. We can just... Oh, that's cool. I thought you had to reload command or whatever. No, not just to not just to change a module. As long as... the Now, if you're adding a module that wasn't already there, then you have to do the slash reload command. But if your module was already there and you're just replacing it with a different version of that same module, you can unload it and reload it in the module activation window. It's good to know. Much better. See, now those look correct. They're not all those busted. Little boxes. Show us how you uh, go about making a macro. Maybe do sure. a simple one and... Or just, I know that one of the ones I use is, you know, spaces. Like, that's pretty easy. But uh, show us one of the find and replace macros that you use commonly for, for conversions. No problem. And what you'll notice in a lot of different PDFs is since they're using different formats, they are not necessarily creating that PDF for Fantasy Grounds. So it's for looking pretty in paper and when it's printed or when it's viewed as a PDF, but when you're actually converting the file, or if you have text from the internet or whatever, it's not designed for Fantasy Grounds. It's made for a whole different purpose. So that's why you have to go the extra mile to fix these things. Yeah, and you'll find that there's a pretty wide range of greater or lesser degrees of professionalism and polish with these PDF files. Some of them are quite rudimentary and some of them are very professional, you know, so there's just a wide range there. So there's a couple of macros that I use. One, control J in this program will remove all the extra line endings. And you can see I've already gone through this file. You just select the text that you want to do and do control J, do the control J and it, you know, removes the line endings. Mm -hmm. And I created a macro because my keyboard has five macro keys on the left-hand side. I have one key that's at the perfect place where my pinky can hit it. So I <laughs> select a bunch of text and my pinky hits the macro for control J and I can really quickly go through a file and remove all those extra line endings. So that's one that I use. And you could do that and, in Fantasy Grounds to a point. It, it you has can do that. the control J You just and you can even use my macro because... And then I've got another one. Sometimes you'll see text where... Uh, let me. Like, it'll be all in uppercase like that, and I don't want it like that. So in Notepad++, you can go here, convert case to proper case, and it'll capitalize each word, but it's so, alt U. So I've made another keyboard macro. Yeah, it fixes it. And it fixes it for me. That's useful. A lot of people don't know how to use Notepad++. So if you learn these little shortcuts, it really makes this process faster. And you can see there's so many features and functions in these menus. You know, it's got a lot of stuff that it'll do. But then the the one that saves me so much time, like what, what you were talking about, is my one that replaces the quotes. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to start a, a recording, a macro, and then you're going to find a character that you want to replace. Now, in this case, I'm just going to replace all of the ends in my document. So I would do Control H, and that brings up your Find and Replace dialog, and I'm going to replace all the ends with the dashes. And I'd hit Replace All. Well, I would type the dash there. And I would hit replace all, I would close it, and then I would stop the macro. And it pops, uh, gives me an ability to save current recorded macro, so you give it a name. You can okay. make it, uh, tie it into a keyboard shortcut by using this part. So if I wanted it to be control, alt, shift, and N, let's say. And then I'd hit OK. And now I've got replace N right there in my macro menu. So I can go and replace all the ends of my document instantly with dashes. Go ahead. For your quotation marks that you want to replace, your N and M dash characters that you want to replace, you know, 
if you decide you don't want to use the U with the hat on it for the word Faerun, you could go through and remove all of those, replace them with a regular U, whatever case you have for the use of that. Right. So you can also get rid of double spaces. That happens a lot, right? Sure. Okay. The same thing here. You would pull up your find and replace. don't want anything select. Pull up your find and replace. You'd put a double space in the top blank and a single space in the bottom blank and replace all. Then you could make a macro out of that. So it looks like the, the bottom line is learning how to use the editing tool and also getting used to what to look for in a given document. Right. And by the time you convert two or three things into Fantasy Grounds module form, you probably will have learned to identify those visually. After my first couple of um, conversions is when I started trying to find ways to streamline my workflow, so to speak, find shortcuts that would save me time. I think that this also might help with uh, not just for Fantasy Grounds, but when people create content, they intend to have a virtual component, they may want to keep this in mind that, uh, you know, fancy isn't everything. You know, you nice to have a professional looking text document and not just photos or little cut and paste little pieces of photos and such, because those are hard to convert. You have those are impossible. You have to retype everything. Yes. And the worst kind of module you can ever run across is the one where every page is an image with text on it. Yeah, you run across them once in a while where you just end up having to retype the whole thing. With uh, bootleg content, you'll find a lot of that in there. They're just scanning images and throwing it on a image on there. So th those kinds of things you want to try to avoid uh, as for much sure. as possible because that's that's not good. It's not good for the community, the author, and it's also not even worth your time working with. Well, it's hard to use, right? And then there's also some where maybe not all of the text is an image, but just the stat blocks are images. I've read into that before as well. And that has to do with the choice the author made to make their module. So they may not be familiar with or have access to all the tools to make them look professional. So they'll throw it together. Absolutely. Because when they're first starting out, especially, they don't have a huge budget for graphics and right. uh, you know professional quality editing services. And all right. I think that pretty much covers most of it. Is there any other things you want to show us before we... I, I think I've divulged all of my secrets. They're all out. Appreciate that and appreciate your time. Sean is a community member in Fantasy Grounds College. He has been for at least two and a half years. Um, he also has worked with Rob Tui, Grim Press. Um, he's helped me quite a bit throughout the years. And he is available for questions. So if you want to PM him in Discord, if you're in the Fantasy Grounds College Discord, he's he's lurking around. Uh, he may not be as active as most of the other members, but he's still there. He's still a member. He's still an expert. So if you guys need to utilize his pick his brain for you know problems like this, he might be able to help you with it. Um, we will put in the links on the documents to this particular tool, which is Notepad++. We will link to his DM skilled projects that he's worked on. And I will also link to anything that is associated with this, such as Fantasy Grounds College and Smiteworks and such. So I think that's a good uh, good outro. Is there anything you want to say? Any goodbyes or any tips or anything? Well, just uh, for whomever is watching this video, appreciate your time. Hope you got something out of it. I've found Fantasy Grounds, both the program and the community, to be uh, extremely positive components of my life for the last few years. I'm just thrilled for more people to get involved with it. Hopefully it, it creates people like yourself that go out and make content and have the time to reach back and say, okay, this is how I did it. You know, it, it really helps the community. It helps uh, even people that aren't part of the community. Give them an idea of what, what goes into this type of work, you know, when you're converting or creating content. Well, thanks for having me on, Leroux. Yeah, no problem. It was great.